Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Amita. Join us weekly to get inspired by guests who will share their success stories. Today, we have two very important members of the BIPOC International Film Festival that's taking place shortly. They'll shed more light on the topic of why BIPOC is important and how this festival is providing a great platform. Our first guest is Ms. Linda Carter, a producer and director. She has been a host, interviewer, and spokesperson for multiple channels, including the Life Channel. Her film, The Making of a Judge, which is a documentary based on her father, the first Canadian-born Black judge, has been received very well globally. Our second guest is Ms. Melody Shang. She has received success in the world of investor relations and marketing specialists. And then she found a passion which she's going to follow for the rest of her life in terms of creating projects. She's an actor, producer, director, and owner of Dream Inc. Company, a multicultural production company in Toronto, which has completed multiple prestigious projects. It's with honor that I welcome to our show, Ms. Linda Carter and Ms. Melody Shang. Welcome to both of you. Ah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So let's start off with you, Linda. Tell us a little bit more about your background, the amazing projects that you've completed so that our viewers understand where you're coming from. Okay, well, um, coming from, well, I'm born and raised in Toronto. I have done, I, I, I came to the industry through the fashion industry because I did a lot of modeling, runway, photography. It was, it was interesting times back then but I come to it from, from the fashion industry. And from there, I always looked at fashion as a stepping stone because once you're seen, then you go into commercials, then you go into film. But what I found, it was very important to do your own projects because if you don't, then you're not gonna be seen most of the time. Because when I was starting out in the industry, you did not see anybody basically anybody that had a different color, there's my phone, different color skin color, or, you know, any different kind of a look, you just did not see them. So, you know, it was very important for me to tell our stories. And as a black Canadian, it was, we weren't seeing any of our stories at all. Everything that we would see would be like, particularly Black History Month would be from the States. And we have so many wonderful stories right here. So they always say, where do you start? You start at home. And that's where I started because my father was constantly talking about what it was like for him to grow up here in the city. Because when he passed, he was almost 97 and he was born in Toronto, the oldest of 14. So I know he must have had a hard time because I know what it was like for me. So that's really my background. And then I, you know, from a lot of acting, different projects, and also, um, you know, just a lot of different things that I was doing for my, you know, doing myself and also going on to um, different shows, different platforms to talk about um, fashion, to talk about film. And also I was doing the um, TIFF, did a lot of TIFF um, interviewing on the red carpet. That was fun. Hectic, but fun. <laughs> so, and now here we are at the BIPOC Film Festival, which is, you know, well overdue. Amazing. And uh, thank you, Linda, for, you know, always challenging the status quo. We need more community leaders like you so that uh, everybody out there gets an opportunity. And uh, now we are at the BIPOC International Film Festival, like you said. Well, let me turn to Melody too. And you have such an amazing story yourself. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Thank you, Amita. Uh, my name is Melody Shang. I was born in China, mainland China. So I came here when I was 23 years old to study at McGill for management. So basically what happened to me was because my family backgrounds in China was really traditional. Like all the Chinese parents, they want your kids to have a major which can, you know, ensure you have a job 
after that. So, so I, I chose management. Uh, so after that, in many years, I work in uh, companies like global companies as investor relations, uh, re in investor relations and marketing. Uh, I enjoyed that part a lot until one day I find out I could be much happier if I'm in production. Uh, so what happened to me was um, I, I got a commercial in uh, North Wales because uh, when I had some spare time, I just started doing audition. And then uh, when I start uh, discovering the happiness I could get from those acting gigs, I start thinking, hmm, you know, I didn't know I could do that. And I didn't know I could so be so happy doing the things I love. And so after a while, I, I realized I was not satisfied only being an actor. I'm still an actor, by the way. Um, and I decided, okay, I'm going to go produce something by myself. So I quit my job. Um, you know, some people say it's a little bit childish, but I did. And uh, I started, uh, you know, uh, planning some projects because I didn't have any academic background. I, it's really hard to start and it's really hard to connect with the industry. Uh, so for me, the challenge was there. And, but I see my road is more clear, especially with this uh, BIPOC initiation going on. I find there are way more opportunities for people like me, you know, people of colors, and uh, so I'm really happy we're doing these festivals to uh, help all the BIPOC filmmakers or actors to stand out. Well, thank you so much, Melody. Same, uh, you are also challenging, you know, uh, you know, what is norms as per society and thinking outside the box. And that's why now we have in uh, wonderful projects individually by both of you. And now you're both jurors on the BIPOC International Film Festival. So we are very excited to learn about what the audience can expect at the festival. But before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to two jurors on the BIPOC International Film Festival team, Miss Linda Carter and Miss Melody Shan. So it's great to have heard both your stories, your backgrounds, which validate you as jurors on such a great first time festival, the BIPOC International Film Festival. I'm going to turn to Linda and tell us a little bit more about what the audience can expect with this festival. Wow. The audience can expect a variety of wonderful films from films that are like maybe four minutes to almost a, to over an hour and a half. And what's great is that you get to see filmmakers from across the globe in different languages. Luckily, most of it is subtitled in English, um, but really because there's so much, there's so much diversity there's so much talent around the world that a lot of times these people don't get their film seen. And that's what's so great about this film festival. Cause I've, I've been looking at films from France, from Panama, from the States, from so many countries, Brazil, some really strong, strong filmmakers. And that's what makes this industry so interesting is the fact that when you have diversity, it's really a very exciting, it's an exciting area. It's an exciting business. And that's what's very interesting I find now with the Oscars, because now we have from Korea, we have from China, we have from Brazil, from Mexico, and it's opening up. And people are realizing that there's been filmmaking going on elsewhere on the globe and now we get a chance to see it and that's what's important you know it's about time very well said i mean uh, globally it's cosmopolitan every part of the world you'll have people from all over the world and now with uh, this festival like you said there are uh, films from multiple countries in multiple languages with subtitles uh, people who are watching can actually probably relate to the stories finally and that's very important. And that's like how Melody said, uh, you know, uh, Melody said you came from mainland China and uh, now you're part of, uh, you know, this world here, which 
we are very grateful for. Uh, tell us uh, from your perspective, how this platform is so important, uh, you know, for the, for the BIPOC com community. Okay, I want to say thank you for the BIPOC International Film Festival Committee first to invite me to be one of the juries among all of you, uh, because I realized that uh, people from different cultural background, uh, even like I'm really, I, I was, I grew up in China, uh, we see things differently, right? So when you have an international film festival, uh, you, uh, we want to get feedback from the juries from the different backgrounds, you know, different age range um, to, uh, to give the real feedback about how they feel about the film submitted. So I was, I'm very lucky to be part of it. And uh, I, uh, we have actually 600 submissions for the first year of these festivals and we're reviewing it now. Uh, and uh, also I want to say uh, one thing to get it straight by Park International Film Festival, either uh, you are by Park filmmaker, you can submit it or you are, uh, you know, you don't have to be by Park but your story is about BIPOC community or person. So you are eligible to submit. So some people don't know the definitions. I just want to make it clear to everyone. So, because now it's the, all the submissions are closed, but for next year's reference, I hope uh, we get way more. 600 is a great uh, number for the first year. And um, I, I've seen a lot of uh, great submissions because I'm focusing more on the Asian side <laughs> myself. So uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, culture uh, elements for myself to learn and to understand. So uh, it's very meaningful for me this year, yeah. Amazing. Uh, actually, Linda, let me get your perspective too uh, on this. Uh, so is, is there a lot of uh, uh, Blacks who have submitted to this festival? Are we seeing uh, films from the community as well? Well, there are. There are a lot of Caribbean, there's a lot of African, Brazilian, American, and some from Canada also. Um, that's a lot of films to go through. Yes. We started at 200 when we started to, when we started to um, you know, be jurors, and now it's up to 600. So it's like, I don't know how I'm going to do them all, but we're working hard, and whatever time we have, you know, we're working on looking at films, but it's wonderful because there are so many varieties. And, and it's interesting because I was one film that I saw that was really quite interesting, that it was Parisian, Muslim, Black, and it was mm. a comedy. So it was very refreshing because you never really know what you're going to find when you open up. You know, so there's, it's great, different perspectives. And what you find out now that we're in the global community, that basically we don't have that many differences. Mm -hmm. We're really, so many things focus on family. Family yeah. is really, you know, is our soul. Family is where we all, we all have, hopefully. And I think that that's what's very important is that sure, we're all different, but we're all very much the same. And I think that's something that's really coming through with this festival. That's I such really, a beautiful message, Linda. Sorry, go ahead, Melody. Add yeah, to that. I really appreciate Linda mentioned about that. I, I totally agree with what you said about there's uh, a lot of things in common, no matter what background you're from, like the human natures, right? Uh, and the virtues you have in your, you know, the values. So that's the thing we see. Uh, I'm very happy to see those uh, submissions uh, from uh, different countries, but uh, where a lot of submissions are telling the same mass selling, sending the same positive message. Uh, so, uh, so which is great because we do want them, because we are in Canada now, so the mainstream is still mainstream here, right? So we want the mainstream to see uh, from multicultural point of view, we have a lot of things in common. So no matter color, what, what, what color of your skin is, that's the you know, beauty of this festival. 
Very well said. Uh, uh, you know, so it's such a positive platform. It uh, sounds like it. And it is challenging stereotypes, which is very much needed in the mainstream so that uh, there's a message that our community can get and make changes for the better. So it's great. Yes, the festival, uh, uh, you know, uh, submission deadlines have, you know, been done, but people can still participate by being able to watch the films. So we're going to find out more how, when, where, but before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to Miss Linda Carter and Miss Melody Shang from the BIPOC International Film Festival. So this is great. Thank you to both of you for being judges. So many films to judge, like you said, but we'll be so grateful to watch some amazing films at this festival. So uh, Melody, can you tell us where people can get more information? Definitely. Uh, it's our first year. So uh, just remember, it's BIPOCfilmfestival.com. Go there and you can see our website. And also we have um, uh, Instagram account and Facebook account. If you search BIPOC Film uh, International Film Festival or BIFF, you will find the accounts. Just start following us. And uh, by next week, I believe we are going to, for the website, you are going to see a new look because we probably announced the uh, uh, winners on already, uh, nominates, sorry, already uh, on the website. So uh, yeah, please just follow us on Instagram everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Melody. And Linda, I'm, uh, turning to you, Melody did say about next year, uh, in your opinion, what is the future of BIPOC International Film Festival? Well, I think it's unlimited because the world is BIPOC. And I mean, North America, Canada is becoming much more diversified. There's so much, there's so many more people that are from other countries that are coming here. And we are speaking the same language around the world. So I think BIPOC is really the future, actually. BIPOC is definitely the future because that's who we are. Thank you. And Melody, would you like to add to that? I can agree more on that. And I would say the universe is the same. And uh, uh, again, no matter what color your skin is, you know, we're, we're from the same mom of earth. So uh, we are looking forward to see more uh, next year. This year will be great. Everyone just go to our website, register for your free tickets. You can go for free tickets. Sorry, I forgot to mention about that. And uh, next year, uh, pay attention to our submission date. And then we will uh, looking forward to see more great creative uh, films. Thank you. Linda, any final words of advice for our viewers as you being a community leader, female community leader from the BIPOC community? You know, I guess, I, I guess one of the things I'd love to say to people is, you know, find your passion, do what you love to do. And I think that's what will take you so far in life. Just do what it takes time. And you might go through a lot of experiences yes. finding it, but and film is a very interesting way to, to learn about it. Because learning, because speaking to people, watching different films, it kind of opens your eyes to what else is happening in the world. But for young filmmakers out there or young people just on the path, just find your passion. Just do what you love to do. That's it. Very well said, Linda. Melody, any final words of uh, being an inspirational female community leader yourself from the BIPOC community? I just want to say that, uh, you know, everybody has a dream, have a, has a passion, just find it out. It doesn't have to be film or whatever, you know, just if you can find it out, you're lucky. And if you do find it out, just move, keep working on that. That's what I want to say maybe to my daughter and son in the future too. So, yeah. And one other thing that I have to say, particularly when I go into the schools and I talk to young people and I show my film, and I say, write your story. Everybody has a story. Talk to your grandparents, talk to your parents, find out what their experiences were like, because that just makes your whole world so much richer. Everybody has a story, so write them. That's it. And, 
Linda, I believe this uh, BIPOC uh, International Film Festival will give our next generation a great, you know, lead and a record for their future. Absolutely. Great. Very well said. Well, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Melody, for talking to us today and inspiring us and telling us more about the BIPOC International Film Festival. That's the first year this year, but will be going on a great platform to keep going for ages and ages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amita. Thank you, Linda. Okay, thank you. Well, that was Miss Linda Carter and Miss Melody Shang who have inspired us to follow through with our roots and with our passions and through this platform, the BIPOC International Film Festival. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Thank you for watching us. Continue to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and write to us at spotlight at ethnicchannels.com. Until next week, this is Amita signing off, encouraging you to take part in the BIPOC International Film Festival. Thank you.